there, Gavin Gear here from makingwithmetal.com. For me, this is absolutely a milestone moment. The PM1440 GT metal lathe from Precision Matthews is in the shop, it's trued up, it's aligned, and I'm ready to cut metal, and I'm ready to do some awesome gunsmithing. But it's been quite a journey to get here, and I wanna tell you a little bit about that journey. It all started for me with an old South Bend lathe. It was about a 1953 Model A, really a nice little lathe, 10 by 24. I quickly outgrew that lathe and moved up to my Logan Model 1922, 11 by 36. I did a full overview video on that for makingwithmetal.com that you might want to check out. I went through various improvements to get it ready for gunsmithing, but I decided I wanted a couple features that this lathe just didn't have and a couple capabilities. First, I wanted a higher level of precision. With a machine built in 1955, it was a great machine, very useful, but the ways were a little bit worn and I just felt like it could be a little bit tighter and I wanted something with a bit more capacity, more horsepower, a geared head design instead of the belt fed design so that I could quickly and easily change gears and change spindle speeds. A little bit more capacity, so I decided on 14 by 40 as a, a really good overall size for what I wanted to do. But what's interesting about the Precision Matthews lathe is that it's got a very short spindle. It's about 15 inches, which is great for gunsmithing when you need to handle both ends of the rifle barrel and get it trimmed in, that kind of thing. But it's also 100% made in Taiwan, so it's the next level of quality up from the Chinese lathes. I'll get into a lot more detail regarding the lathe itself, why I chose it, the improvements that I'm making to it. I'm adding some extra storage to it and some attachments, that kind of thing. An outboard spider for truing in barrels, for instance. I'll have a full write-up on that. I'll save that for the lathe overview. In this video, I wanted to tell the story about getting the lathe, unboxing the lathe, and setting it up. Because with this kind of a thing, there's always a story. And sometimes that story involves sleepless nights, endless planning, worrying about, you know, will the truck come up the mountain road that I live up on? Is it gonna arrive in one piece? You know, am I gonna have trouble with weather? I was thinking originally that I was gonna be up here in the snow or in the mud in the spring. Well, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted. I debated between single phase and three phase and running a, a VFD or not. And I decided it was too much trouble and too much rewiring to go with the VFD solution. So I decided on a single phase motor. It's been working really good and I'm glad on that. So it's taken a little bit of extra time, but it made it a little bit less eventful. I met the driver down at the bottom of our mountain road and he was really cool he was doing another drop off and he followed me up this road this crazy road that i live on up here in the mountains it's rocky it's bumpy it's lumpy it's super dusty and i've brought three 40 foot high cube shipping containers up here it's stressful it's super tight some of these turns on the road and usually I'm, I'm serving as the guide vehicle and I'm looking behind myself thinking, oh, I just hope I see him edging along, you know, in my rear view mirror. Same thing with the concrete trucks. I talked a little bit about that in my spring update. Well, the driver was really cool, like I said, and we made it up here to the shop area, which was a huge relief, but then began the adventure of unloading and getting this machinery into my shop. I also got the PM 949 nine inch by 49 inch table, Bridgeport style milling machine. I'll have a bunch of stuff on that as well. So I had two machines that I was gonna offload and the fun started right away. We were backing out the milling machine and that went pretty good, but uh, the pallet jack got stuck between the crate itself, the huge pallet with the crate on top and the forks that I was using on my industrial backhoe. So we had to, shift it around and finagle with it a little bit. Finally, we got the pallet jack out and we got the entire PM 949 TV milling machine into the shop. Huge, huge relief then. Then came the metal lathe itself, this PM 1440 GT. And it was a little tippy. I was a little bit concerned because the truck was parked uphill. 
but we were able to get it onto the forks and then we set it on the ground with some wood under it to kind of reposition it so that we could get it into the shop in one piece. And that took a bit of time and it's always better to be patient and just decide, hey, if this takes the whole day, I'm gonna take the whole day. I'm not gonna rush it. This is really expensive equipment, real precision equipment, and I wanted to make sure everything was gonna be absolutely perfect. Well, finally, we got the metal lathe into the shop on the forks and we set it down on, onto some wood and then began the process of uncrating this. This is the wildest unboxing experience I think I've ever had. It was really exciting to take off the boards and start to see this precision metal lathe and the accessories. I got the preferred package and I got a couple other things with it, a quick change tool post and some stuff to make sure that I got set up properly. Well, that was really exciting and the more I saw the lathe, the more I got excited. But then came the really crazy part, which was this lathe is meant to be lifted via slings and you use spreaders. The spreaders go kind of under the bed and keep the straps off of the lead screws, that kind of thing, the, the rod that engages the forward and reverse for the spindle, all of that, all of these guys right here. So I made some sandwiched up two by four ones. I rounded the edges so that they would be gentle on the straps and we lifted it and it worked really good. But when you're driving on really lumpy dirt with this, you know, 1800 pound package swinging, it's really nerve wracking. So again, I went really, 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 really slow and we set it down on this contraption that I kind of put in place. I wanted to put the lathe here in this shipping container shop portion of the overall shop because I wanted to utilize the space effectively and it worked out really good here. You know, long narrow rooms are fine for metal lathes. As long as you have enough room to get around back to the electrical panel, that kind of thing. But what I decided to do, I had all sorts of ideas about how I was gonna do this and what I ended up on was rigging up some wood beams that were gonna be perfectly level with the floor surface and then using my favorite, which is three quarter inch black pipe, which is about an inch OD on the outside or so, a little bit over perhaps. And so we drove the backhoe around and I lowered it down onto black pipes on twin wood beams that I checked with a level, it was perfectly level, and we took the straps off and there it was sitting ready to roll straight into this shop, right out the end doors there. We actually took the glass slider that I installed out so that we had an entire nine foot high approximately opening. So then began the process of rolling the lathe into the position and I'll have to say the whole Egyptian methodology of rolling on pipes is awesome. I got my grandpa's milling machine, a small Taiwanese milling machine out of here that way. I, had, I put that milling machine into the shop that way and it worked great, but that's only about eight, 900 pounds. I didn't know how it was gonna do with the lathe with the cabinet. Well, the cabinet is perfectly square on each end. There's two ends of the cabinet, obviously, on the headstock side and on the tailstock side. And all it took was a gentle push and we were rolling. It worked really, really well. So I was really happy with that. And then came the magic and that was the cast iron leveling feet that come with the lathe slipped right under while the pipes were in there. We were able to tighten the bolts down on that, take the weight of the lathe up off the pipes and then get it into place. Slide the pipes right out. Couldn't have gone better. And the nice thing about working with pipes is you can shift the machine. You can kind of scoot it and twist it in place and that enabled us to measure from the wall and get it just right, just where we wanted it to be. So with lathe in place, I was hugely hugely relieved. It was practically time to crack a cold one right then, but we had more work to do. I wired up the single phase power, it's 240 volts, got that in place. I did a rough leveling job just to make sure that we were in the right vicinity and fired the machine up and everything was good. Then came installing the DRO display. I ordered this with the Precision Matthews two axis DRO. It's got a high resolution cross slide DRO scale, which has 10th of a thousandth resolution, which is awesome. So on a diameter, you get two tenths of a thousandth resolution. Amazing. And I haven't had a DRO on a lathe. I've just rigged up kind of temporary, you know, 
little backwoods kind of solutions with digital calipers and stuff like that just to get some measurements. But this is a whole new deal. And I'll have to say, when I did the precision leveling of the machine and I turned a metal rod between centers and got the tailstock aligned and then measured the deflection of the tailstock side to side, it, amazing. I mean, we're talking about amazing precision. And again, I'll get more into that when I talk about the lathe overview. I've had probably five or six hours of spindle time with the lathe and it's working really, really good. I've added some extra storage, which I'll get into, and I'm just getting everything set up. I've got a high precision Taiwanese four jaw chuck that I obtained with the machine. So I've got that and the three jaw chuck and a face plate. It comes with two Morse taper three centers, a Morse taper five and a half to Morse taper three reducer sleeve for the spindle ends so that you can put a Morse taper three center in the spindle or any of the other Morse taper three items that you need. And it's, it's been really good. It takes a little bit of getting used to a different way of shifting you know, speeds and, and feeds and that kind of thing, but uh, it's all there written out on charts in front of the machine. So I'm really excited about it. It's here, it's, it's amazing. I've, I've totally gotten used to the lathe. It sounds good, it runs good. It does really, really great work. And one of the projects that I've already done that I'm gonna do a full video and blog post on is the lathe spider that's gonna hold long rods on the outboard end. It's gonna help me true in rifle barrels and support them on the outboard end. Really, really turned out well. I found a way to design a pinch clamp so that you can install and uninstall the spider without taking off the side cover. It's kind of cool. So you can leave all your stuff set up on top of the machine and not have to pop that off. So really good stuff. It's, it's been an adventure so far, but really the adventure is just starting. And so uh, what I hope is that you'll subscribe to Gavin Tube, all the making with metal updates, all the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT stuff is gonna be on there. All the Precision Matthews PM949 TV, the variable speed three horsepower model really awesome machine is going to be on there as well. So do you have a lathe move story that you want to share? Please drop a comment. Also, I have a full write up if you click through on the link below. So this is going to be awesome. I'm going to do a full fundamentals of metal lathe operation content series coming up here shortly. Subscribe to Gavin Tube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, read the full write up. Until next time, happy metalworking.